Sometimes music production is all about limitations, and imposing some restrictions on yourself can ironically end up being the most liberating, or at least highly focused way of channeling your creativity. With this in mind, I decided to set myself a big challenge, not just to prove that it's possible, but also to show how much you can do with a good knowledge of granular synthesis and sound design, and most importantly, to have some fun along the way. My task was to take the kick sample that I used in my previous granular synth video, the now infamous kick 007 from the live library. <laughs> I've heard this kick so many times now and use that single sample as the basis for an entire track. I ended up going for a sort of driving melodic techno track for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. And the thing is the kick isn't even that great. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's better kicks here in the vicinity. I just kind of grabbed that one because it was near the top of the list. So I didn't make my life easy to start with. But hey, no pain, no gain, right? In any case, that kick sample needed to become all of the sounds in the track. From the other drums, like the snare, cymbals and percussion, to all of the melodic sounds like the bass, leads, pads and so on. And finally, different FX layers. So how is this even possible? Well, if you watched our granular synthesis video already, then you'll know just how much it can transform a sample. And one of the main reasons for that is the unique ways that it can manipulate time. For instance, it can be made to loop very small parts of the sample. So not too different from regular sampling at this point, but if I turn up this scan amount here, then instead of the grains looping this portion here, they'll move or scan through the sample, which adds a kind of time stretching style effect. If you go too high with it, it sort of loses the pitch there, but if I play a much higher note, and that sounds pretty cool, or if I bring the scan right down again and play a lower note, and transpose it down a bit, add a bit of spread, which is a bit like unison voicing, and you could probably hear just how cool this is going to be for making all sorts of basses and leads. I'm using similar techniques on a lot of the melodic sounds in the track, like this pluck here, for instance, which has some filtering on it first to remove a lot of the high frequency content, and then a lot of effects. And also one of the bass sounds, which has some low pass or high cut filtering on it with a bit of enveloping to create a kind of pluckier sound. And then with the effects. Turning scan off for a second though, so we're going back to a kind of fixed loop again. If I now turn up variation, this will add some changes to the position that the grains are playing from. So you kind of lose that sense of pitch or like it's playing a particular note and it sounds a lot more like noise. And the grain size now controls the kind of pitch of that noise. So this is being used to create quite a few different sounds in the track from this cymbal type sound here, which just has a brief amplitude envelope. So it's just a short burst of sound, a bit like noise. But if you filter out a lot of the lows and add a load of reverb, and then record in quite a few different hits because it's quite temperamental. Then that gave me quite a few nice options for different impacts and kind of noise bursts and crashes. The snare actually didn't use this, even though you'd think it might, because I almost feel like I'm cheating here in that the effects did all of the legwork. You can hear what's coming out of Granulator. and then with the effects. So all sorts of distortion, pitch shifting, transient shaping, wave shaping, and loads of stuff going on there. Now, in case you're wondering what instruments I used in this project, pretty much everything was done with Granulator 3. 
a new instrument on the way for suite owners in Ableton Live 12. It's a small device, but packs a huge punch. But I also used Phase Plant for a couple of sounds too. Again, just loaded with the exact same kick sample. I could have made them with Granulator, but I felt like a change. Here's one of the main pads in the track. I really like the displays on Phase Plant. They really make it clear uh, what's going on. And although you don't have a scan control like you do on Granulator, you can use any of the modulators down here, like the envelopes and LFOs, to modulate the position in the same sorts of ways. And the effects in Phase Plant are particularly cool, especially with multi-pass and snap heap that allow you to do things like multi-band and parallel processing. As a sneak preview, by the way, I've done this granular synthesis template patch which is designed to make it behave a little bit more like granulator in terms of the scan and so on, but with loads of other cool benefits as well. So the idea is you just drop in any sample into phase plant and you can create really, really awesome patches straight away. So this is our exact same kick sample once again, and you can hear it's making it into a pretty cool kind of bass patch that would go down better in bass music. So I'm going to give this patch away, uh, as well as doing a quick video on it later on. So make sure you stay subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. I'm also a fan of this dubby stab sound, which uses Granulator's cloud mode. So the difference there in classic mode, you can hear we just get a kind of single note. But if you set it to cloud mode instead, you get a whole cluster of grains, up to 20 if you like, um, which have a bit of pitch spread. So it creates more of a chord or, or an interval. I can definitely hear a kind of fourth interval in there somewhere. And if you add filtering and delay, and we've got a really nice dubby stab to go on top of our groove. So that's basically the techniques behind a lot of the sounds. And as far as the rest of the track goes, it's all down to effects processing, arranging, mixing, automating, and everything else in between. All of which you can learn with us at producertech.com should you want to join our community and take your production to the next level. Anyway, I hope you feel inspired to check out Granular Synthesis for yourself now, and maybe consider setting yourself some restricting challenges like this to see what kind of creativity that it leads to. Incidentally, these are exactly the kind of things that we do with our membership community from time to time through various assignments and so on. I'll put the track up on the Producer Tech SoundCloud page if you want to check it out in full and marvel at just how far a simple kick drum sample can go. Let's hear it again, and I'll leave you with a bit more of what it turned into. See you next time.